Today's show is sponsored by Tweezy R. So Alan, if you want to do some upkeep between eyebrow threading sessions or your next trip to the shopadist, having a reliable set of beauty implements in your medicine cabinet comes in handy. I've not been one for plucking my eyebrows, Mark, but as I've got older, I've noticed those nostril hairs and toenails are getting harder to deal with. Yeah, me too. It sounds like you need Tweezy R beauty implements. They're surgically engineered, perfectly balanced and sharpened, and made from surgical grade stainless steel. All I need now is a lifetime warranty. Well, now you mention it, Alan. Not only are they unparalleled in quality, they also come with a lifetime warranty. Get f- Seriously? As long as you've not lost or abused them, fill in the warranty form when you purchase your Tweezy R surgically engineered tweezers, and they'll be replaced for free. To order your Tweezy R surgical engineered beauty implements, Go to tweez-er.com and enter the promo code XPATS10 at checkout and receive 10% off your order. Our guest today is Scottish XPAT and among many other accolades is the founder of Perth Bagpipes. Scott Hanna, it's nice to meet you. Thanks very much for coming along. Yeah, thanks thanks for, for coming on. Thanks very much for having me on the show. I'm, I'm glad to, to be here. We sort of contacted you early on, Scott, so it's, uh, we've, been, yeah, we've been kind of waiting to, to get you here just with one thing oh, or another. So yeah. It's nice to see you. So how, how long have you been in the country then? How long have I been in the country? I've been here for four and a half years now, I think. So I came over in at the end of August. Now, I remember that because that was the end of the pipe band season there. Um, end of August 2016. Yeah. And I came over for the job, so I applied for the, the, the job as a bagpipe player with WA Police Pipe Band. Oh, right, so you came over for yeah, that. That's, that's the yeah. job. So I gave myself. Uh, I I just said, you know what, I'm done with Scot- Scotland. I I came over here in 2014 for a family holiday with my dad, and the minute I landed in Perth, I was like, this place is awesome. And then the job came up as well. The plan was to to do some travelling around the the world, and then to meet my brother who'd been in Brisbane for 10 years, and then to find work there. But this job came up first, so I just came straight straight here. Um, for the for the job, yeah, in two thousand sixteen, yeah. Is your brother still in Brisbane? No, he's since moved over to Perth. Oh, right. so he's over here with you. Yeah, now, he is now. Yeah, Cause Cause I was sorry, sorry, I was going to say because I'm sure. It, it, does he look quite like you've got? You got? He's got the beard, and the, he looks quite like you, doesn't he? He doesn't have a beard. He is looks not, y- 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 younger than me, and his hair is not receding as much, which is which well, isn't great. But well, <laughs> I, there was somebody like, on your Facebook. You've got, uh, or the, when you're flying your DJI, there was somebody look. I thought, I must be his brother. He's no, been when I did that trip up north, I, w- I went alone. So, yeah. But my brother's in, in Perth, but he, he does look alike me, but he wasn't on that trip. Right, yeah. I must, must be, I don't know who I'm getting mixed up with. Yeah. I thought this guy looked spit an MGR. I might be going through you. Yeah, I was kind of trolling through. Yeah, he does all, oh, well, he's yeah, always stalking you. Yeah, I, I do so. a bit of stalking, probably. Just <laughs> yeah, that's to, all good. Just so to get how, long, phone. how long were your brother in Brisbane for? Oh, he moved over when he was 21, like he'd been over there and then I came over and my sister moved here as well All right. and then when we both came he came over here last April last Easter and ended up meet, meeting a bird on Tinder and then that, that was just the final thing and then because me and my sister are here as well and now he's he's lives with that girl in yeah. Le- Leaderville so. so so you you and your sister are here and he, yeah. he, came, he came over, over. not no for you but for somebody uh, for, yeah I'd like to think it was for, <laughs> for, for me and her but no it was, yeah. it was for the bird well oh, there you go that, that's impressive must have been, yeah. must have been some must, skinny strong yeah. must be nice to having all three uh, all yeah, like that's great. together and there's one more she's just finished her nursing degree in Dundee. Oh, she'll she'll be getting the call to come over well, as well. Well, we I? we've been trying loads, but I think my parents are subconsciously like, "Oh no, stay." But we're like, "Nah." Get they must be next on the list. Yeah, they'll, they'll, be, yeah they'll be coming over next. Eh? They they well they they do plan to, but I think um, they're past the age where you could do it. Um, on the cheap, where so it'd be quite an expensive thing. I yeah, think. it's th- I think it's thirty thousand pound yeah. per person. I think which is absolutely a, insane. On a, yeah, on a what's it called? A it, there's no visa. another vis- visa you can get though that because there's three of you here already. Is that the same visa? I'm not sure. Well, I think you can get a visa. It's called like like last remaining relative yeah, visa. That's but they've thinking. already got they've got fa- family over there. Yeah. In Sc- in Sc- Scotland, so I don't think they'd apply for that. It's just the children because we we yeah. inquired for. Karina's mum and dad and if you've got three kids say if you had three kids and one of them's in Australia one of them's in Holland one of them's in the UK you couldn't come because you've the the majority of your kids aren't in Australia yeah, that, that's oh, but I if you've got, if, you've got three if you've got four, four of us kids, here yeah, yeah. If you've got four if your mum and dad have got four children and three of them are here then they'd be able to come because mm. you'd be out where 
Okay. That's so that may work I don't well. think you need to pay yeah. all that money. Get them all over at once. And then they can get a massive house here as well. There's, there's well, well granny, flat, there. granny flats are normally in our as well, aren't they? Yeah. And granny flats yeah. are bigger than homes back home. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. No, so, so nice. you've been working with the the pipe band. What what do you do? What's the what's your kind of daily with the with the, the, the pipe band? Yeah. yeah, yeah. So on Mondays and Tuesdays, the band we we work it's it's called Other Duties. So the 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 guys in the band help help out around the force. So you've you've got folk that work with like the police dogs. You've got folk that work with a mounted se- section as well. Folk that work in police recruitment, just different police stations. You know, I used to work in the social media team. Uh, I, de- I developed quite a few skills there, and then I took that back to the pipe band. So I'm like full time at the pipe band. So I, I I do the social media for the for the band as well. Oh, this yeah. is this is awesome. I'm going to pick your brain so much now. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and so we we do that on Mondays and Tuesdays days and then on Wednesday, Thursday, Fridays we have like a band practice a week and then we go we go out and do engagement so we'll maybe play at like 40 schools a year we, we, we go out we go to the assembly play to the kids and like explain to them what the bagpipes and the drums are what the police are and uh, and and have some fun, fun as well and we, we, we just play at different community events so the, the band's a community engagement tool um, the, the the police use so so we go out to different gala days, different parades, just wherever the com, com, commissioner of the police wants a pipe band out out to play, and um, we do that. We play at the, the graduations for the new recruits, so we teach them how to how to march as well. So yeah. there's usually four squads that come in each year. So there's there's like it's 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 called a grad week. So we rehearse with them all all week, and then they have their graduation on the thir- yeah. Thursday night. You know, we do police funerals as well. So we do the whole band will go for a ser- servant officer. And then it'll just be one player that goes for a re- retiring officer. So there was, there was once I took a, a police car down to Albany for a funeral there. It's, it's, it's mad, oh, yeah. you know. There's, that, that's, that's a lot of respect to showing that. that that's yeah. really nice. I like that. Yeah, that's good. And, and there's folk that, that get flown up to Broome and Port Head, Headland and stuff. We drove out to Kalgoorlie once for a, a, a funeral there. Um, we went over to Sydney for the the Edinburgh Royal the Royal Edinburgh Military Tattoo as well, which was oh, yeah. last year. So that. that Goes on tour, came to Sydney, so they flew the whole pipe band over, over there. We, of course, every minute we're playing pipes, we're on shift, so yeah. it's, it's sweet. Yeah, you're yeah. for it as well. <laughs> you know, it's <laughs> great. I mean, playing your musical instrument that you obviously love, you've yeah. been playing since you're nine, I know. and getting paid for it. I mean, that just, I mean, what an experience as well, because yeah. just being over there, being part of all that. Yeah, different gigs like that. We do that, so like mon- Monday to Thursday, and then like the best gig we've done was um, when, when, when Paul McCartney came to Perth. So yeah, we played Mullock and Tyre on the stage with him. Oh, you, were you were on stage with yeah, Paul McCartney. Uh, yeah, it's absolutely not nuts. So we went the day before for a rehearsal, met him on stage. Uh, we we got fed by him, um, and then the net the, the next day we came for the the show. It's just like I was like, what's going on here, Paul, man? Paul McCartney was probably like he was on stage with Scott Hanna. <laughs> you got to remember, he's Piper of the Year, 2018, is that right? Oh, or I won a solo like championship yeah, solo, here yeah. in, in, in Perth, yeah, yeah, I've yeah. done that, and then the, the World Piper Championship. And you won the yeah, shots, we, we shots in Dykehead. World Piper Band Championships, won, 2015. Yeah, Paul McCartney, he's, he's, that's Scott Hanna, I know him. That's pretty cool uh, though, mate. Yeah, 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 it was fun. So we had some pretty awesome, awesome gigs. You know, the band yeah. also went to, I think they, they went to the Tattoo in Russia as well in 2001. Yeah. Like, I can't believe... The job the, exists. The job exists. It's absolutely nuts. I mean, to recruit someone from Scotland yeah. to join a police force pipe, but there's pipe, pipe bands all over the world. Band. Yeah, there's. Yeah, a, the, this is pipe probably bands the, is literally that. There's, yeah. there's bands for all over this the world. Is, go. This is probably the only like professional pipe band where where you're paid full time, unless it was an. Yeah, ar- to be full time. That's what I mean. Yeah. Like to be full full time employed by WA Police as yeah. a bagpiper. It's crazy, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Well, that, I mean, it sounds like he's working like a dog, though. He's, yeah, he's, but yeah, you, yeah, I mean, really, you're doing, you, you're kind of doing probably police, like sim. No, I don't mean like on, on the front line, but you are doing police duties. With yeah, some yeah, of, yeah, yeah, yeah. We support frontline officers, you know. It's, yeah. it's, it's called. There's all this jar, jar, and you jar get like about. similar like kind of benefits as the police. Yeah, like, so with, it's, like, it's the same super so, and stuff. And yeah, we're, we're on the same level as a police con- constable, which is cool. And then we get we get all the perks as well with leave and stuff. So you you get. Sw- Sworn and unsworn off officers, right? And I think the, the the sworn ones, which are doing the 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 real work, you know, they they get maybe slight slightly more perks like bank hall, 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 holidays and stuff. But we're still on a pretty sweet deal. It's 
sponsored us as well. So yeah, yeah. So it's yeah, good. and that's getting sponsored for getting yeah. here must be quite good. A lot of people struggle to get. I will. I did come, but can't get yeah, here. Yeah, I didn't realise how how hard hard it was to get sponsorship here until I joined the police, and then I started to make friends who were expats. Well, and they're like, oh, I'm just trying to get a four five seven and all this. Try to do my farm work and all, and I'm like, what? You just have yeah. it. Yeah, yeah. It's it. just like hand to hand to me a plate. So very very lo- lucky, you know. It's good. Yeah, but as yeah, I don't support. I don't suppose it's luck, is it? Because there's a skill to what you do, and you've been you've been learning kid, it right? since you were a kid. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So it might see, it might come across as like you've been lucky, but yeah. you put the, you've put the hours in, you've put the work in, haven't you? And yeah, all that stuff. Yeah. That's that's what you get rewarded for when coming here. There what? was a police pipe band in in Strathclyde, of course, which now say, changed. Yeah, that's the only one I knew was actually the Strathclyde police pipe band. Yeah, I didn't realise it was a Tayside actually. After oh, there might. was, yeah. yeah. So, well, the band now is called Police Scot- Scotland, no, but I think they yeah. do still have pipe, pipe bands around because you had Grampian Police as well, Lothian and Bor- Borders Police pipe band as well. So, what, what got you into it in the first place? I mean, nine year old, pretty young. I, mean, I, I think oh, that's, that's yeah. an optimal age, isn't it? One of my mates told me that. I don't know if that's I true. think it is. There's so but many you background get, players. You your fingers and stuff straight. We were walking past a music shop in Farfar. When my mum went past the shop and she saw a set of pipes there and said, Do you want to learn pipes? And I'm like, What? She's like, Do you, you want to learn pipes? And I'm like, Oh, yeah, sure. And then that was it. So, but, so no family ties, nothing no, like that. Just you're not, the first in the line. I'm the first one, yeah. It was quite a struggle at the start. Like, I'm I'm a slow le- learner, right? So, my mum was like, She used to push us, and then we joined the local pipe band. My brother played the drums as well. Uh, like the snare and uh, she used to take us down to band practices and then you'd learn there for free and the whole point is that you come up to a point where you you, you play play in the band he was a bit more stu- stubborn than me so he managed to get out, out of it but mum like just pushed me pushed pushed and there was like there was arguments and there was fights all the way d- down the line until other folk my age started to join the band and they're friends that I have now still so yeah, that, that's like the, great, yeah. the social circles you you get with pipe pipe bands are amazing because if if you join a new pipe band you're there's like twenty five pipers and like fifteen dr- drummers right so that's potentially like forty fifty new new pals you know and then these pipe bands go to events and compete against other pipe bands so they all mix and then it just become you you go on you play you do your stuff and then everyone goes goes to the beer tent and it's just an absolute piss up <laughs> and then there's like friends of pipe bands and pipe bands attract women as well so yeah so. and kilts attract more women and I mean you, yeah, it's, so it's, it's, it's got to be a win-win Scott yeah, yeah so a lot of the friends I have that I've had throughout, throughout my life come, come from pipe bands and even now like working in W police pipe bands like my my best friends play in the band now. It's quite weird because I've already I've always played in pipe bands as as a a, a hobby, you know. Yeah. But then I came here and it was a job, so it's like getting that balance right between work and play. Yeah, <laughs> so, I did it. I did it yeah. feel that when you because like when you were at home, it weren't a full time thing. So no. coming here, getting paid. Yeah, and yeah. Getting a good salary to be a bagpipe and player, it must have been adopting police values and like trying to be like a good employee and stuff whilst having fun in the pipe the, the pipe band as well. There was there was a um must be a quite learning hard there. because <laughs> yeah. with the pipe bands were drinking and, and yeah. socialising and having a laugh and they'd try to tone that down to be for the police, police as, well, as well. Yeah, so the, so there was a, a yeah. learning curve there. But yeah. <laughs> so there's one got the full uh, contingency. It's got the right amount of pipers and. Drummers yeah, and all so, that, so it's full proper. Yeah, nine pipers, five drummers. So yeah. it's great. And then there's one guy, the guy that's in charge. He's he's police. So they want the the unit to be run by an op- operational police of, of, officer. Yeah. You know? yeah. Um. But yeah, I mean, it's quite a small pipe band compared to your bands back home. Like, like shots, you'd have to- twenty five pipers plus. Whereas here, there's there's ten. So I also play flute and whistle in a folk band as well oh, yeah. around Perth. So we play in the uh, we play around the I- Irish bars in Perth. Um, with Chris as well, he plays guitar, and then another guy Ross that play, that's, uh, uh, plays pipes in the the band. He plays the Ellen pipes, which is the uh, Irish pipes, right? Which is, so they're blown by the bellows with your your oh, arm, yeah, you know. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Which is actually the the pipe that that you hear on the film Braveheart. So is that it's right? actually well, Irish it's not pipes. a bad pipe. Then. It's an Irish pipe. That it's you hear in the film. Scottish about that film. Though, Sorry really. for the sho- shocker, right? Eh? But <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so the three of us play. T- picture the Titanic scene, you know, when they're, when they're down on the third deck playing tunes. We we do that around the Irish bars in Perth and quite often get paid in beers. So that's uh, fun. And then there's another boy in the band that plays drums in the WA place. He plays the Baran, which is the. Oh, yeah. I like uh, the Irish Baran. That's a, you can get a cracking sound out of that. Yeah, so yeah. The, fo- the four of us and then a, an, another fiddle pl- player as well who met who's from Scotland, Scotland as well. We go around the Ar- Irish bars in Perth and there, there's a new one in Scarborough called the, Gal- the Galway Hooker. 
So yeah, we play that's there. a good name for a pub. Aye, that's the so Gull, uh, that's which is named <laughs> actually after the boat which they took over from Ireland as well. So that's the, the name of the boat which has been named after something that's else. That's a cracking <laughs> name for a pub, that isn't it? Yeah. yeah. So that's in Scarborough. We're there every Wednesday night playing tunes from six till nine. So, so. whereabouts is that? Is that like on the foreshore? Sure, yeah, then? it's just beside um, the lookout bar. Yeah, right. so it's, oh, yeah, it's a nice bar. The main strip. Yeah, yeah. 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 So what's what's the name of the band then? Uh, it's called Backram. Backram. That's right. So we it. called the name Backram, which is B A C H R A M, um, which means boisterous in Gaelic. I think. I think I'm not 100 percent sure, but it also means dried cow shite. So we're oh, like, right, right we should yeah. probably cha- change that. <laughs> yeah, it's not so, a good name. Though. Yeah, so we changed it to Backram. So B A C H R U M. So that's just our own word that we cr- yeah. created, you know. And uh, yeah, yeah. We, we play around. There's another Irish bar in the north, which is called the Anchovine. And we play in there uh, like once a month. And um, that's good. And then there's a new one called Johnny Foxes as well, which just replaced Rosie O'Grady's. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I heard that change hands or something. Yeah. Like that. One of your guests mentioned that before. Yeah, so we, we play in there. And then there's one called the Mighty Quinn as well. We play in there. Is that the one in Subi? What's the one in Subi that is? No, the Mighty oh, Quinn. Oh, JB O'Reilly's. JB O'Reilly's. Is that, O'Reilly's. Yeah. That's the one he used the to play. The Mighty Quinn on. Was it on like, Wanneroo, Wanneroo Road, Road? Yeah, on the way up when yeah. you're, you're leaving Perth. Just yeah, I've out, drove I past that. I've never been in it. Yeah, it's <laughs> like one of them pubs where you. you yeah, so night. We, we're just in there. We play tunes. We we get paid a bit. We get some food. We get we get some drinks. We just it's just fun time. for us, you know. Yeah, yeah. It's good. Ideal, yeah. That sounds like a well, it's, keeps yeah, you healthy. Well. Well, considering you've been healthy. here, you've been here four years. You've seemed to have like integrated pretty damn well. Oh well, and you, you seem like you've got a hell of a social life as well. Yeah, it's good, good fun. Like, so other than your pipe and stuff, do you got any other social things? What, what do you do? Oh, so we play, we'll play a lot in the band as well. And the, the, the Ellen Piper that plays as well, he's like a seriously gifted musician. He's been playing Ellen Pipes for years. So I spend quite a lot of time practicing. Is, is that a whistle. different thing for the? I mean, what's it like playing that? To the yeah, pipes? so the pipes, you know, it's just like you're you're one scale. So it's but whereas the flute and the whistle, you, you get two, three up octaves you know so yeah. you have much more variety of tunes um, and it's much more so- sociable too right I mean the pipes are really really loud it's like if you were to play the, the pipes in a room it's like everybody has to stop and they're like right okay, yeah. we're listening to bag, bag, bagpipes now whereas like a traditional band can sit and play in the corner and folk can en- enjoy it so it's much more fun like that you know and all the tunes you can play on bagpipes you can you, you can play on the flute and the whistle as well they both have the same thing, fingering as well whereas you can't play the tunes on the all the tunes on the whistle on pipes because it's got much less notes okay. but the the bagpipes are an entirely different instrument you know what I mean they, they, were, they were used as a war instrument but one of my mates back home he's got his it must be his great grandfather's uh, pipes that he t- took in the trenches in World War One, yeah, yeah. and he went up over the, t- the top of trench with them and that. And they're they're, they're black uh, ebony, yeah, with, yeah. With silver. I mean, they're, they're, honestly, I've seen them They'll once in his house. Worth a lot of money now. Like, uh, they're, like, they're, yeah. they're priceless to him. He's, he, he, his yeah. son actually plays the pipes as well. He, he was playing with uh, what, what's he clack manager pipe band. Oh, there's that loads of pipe bands around there. Yeah, he, he was yeah. like, I mean, when I worked with Rab, that was he died. He's Youngest boy, he was only seven. It wasn't his youngest boy. His boy was playing the pipes. Only started at seven, but he was, he was Rab was desperate to get him his pipes, yeah. and I think he, he has played them now and stuff like that. Oh, but good. yeah, they're incredible. So, he because these old these old pipes as well. Some of them have got ivory on them as well, which is and you still get ivory pipes now. I think they're made from really old built billiard balls, you know. But of course, there's no there's no new ivory pipes because it's such yeah. strict laws. Yeah. Where, around that now I'm, I'm actually trying to get my ivory pipes sent over from Scotland and now because my stepdad makes pipes um, so his pipes that he made for me I'm trying to get them over because I, I wasn't sure when I moved here if, if I was going to stay here full time so I just left them with, with my dad yeah. and there's such so many hoops you have to jump through it's called CITES now you have to get certificates you have to prove where the, the ivory came came yeah. from and all sorts he made the pipes in 2015 but the, the I, ivory was from old old balls you know he re, returned them yeah as a th- interesting profession as well, I would imagine. Yeah. They, they, they very, ship, very ship, hand, ship handy as well, world. wasn't it? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I can imagine being pipes. a bagpipe maker. I, can, I bet they, they get more orders overseas than probably what they yeah, do in they Scotland. Do. Uh, that's true. He, he, he actually shipped loads, loads of pipes over to, us, to Australia, you know. That's quite a, a lonely... Um, Profession though, you know, turning pipes. Yeah. Does he just work alone then, or is well, he it just does, him yeah, that does it? Does. I mean, he he he, did, he spent thirty years with another pipe maker. Um, I think before he met my mum, and my mum was like, "Here, you should be doing this yourself." You know? Is that just old school? You know, on a lathe, 
Top so you get some it. pipe makers now that turn pipes on CNC lace. It's yeah. just like press play, and, yeah, and, and, and it just and does it goes. It. Whereas Doug just makes the whole thing from scratch. So it's all hand turned and yeah. everything. I'm, I'm sure I've seen like I think it's a, like a weird way some years ago. This guy was hand turning pipes and stuff. Like that. There's got to be something like nostalgic about that though. And it's got like a, an appeal, and if if they've actually had hand turned, yeah, yeah, yeah. I can imagine if someone's got to buy a bagpipe. They, they, they want, want to they be want a real quality thing. product. They want something yeah. that's had blood, sweat, and tears put into it, yeah. rather than just a machine that's, that's fired it out. Yeah, uh, that's the thing. And p- pipers now they're 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 traditionalists, you know. So they they, yeah. love, they love to go back to, to the way it was. So like quite often throughout the na- the nineties, I think there was all these synthetic products made for pipes, like drone reeds and bags and stuff using technology, you know. But a lot of the bag pipers now like to go back to the ba- the basic way it was with cane reeds and she- sheepskin bags you know yeah. just so that it's that authentic sound when I first came across you so it was on Scots in Perth I think yeah. and there was a couple of videos with you well first of all I seen the it was more of the aerial sort of stuff I thought oh that's, that looks beautiful I wonder where that is and it was Kimberley yeah uh, and oh then, what an amazing then, place then, then, the, then the, the drone comes round and now here's a, this piper standing so I thought I'd better put that. so I had it on mute obviously I'm usually looking at my phone on mute and, hit, hit, put, and the sound that came out it was like man that's unbelievable how, how good is this guy but I was equally as fascinated with your aerial photography with your drone that, that was yeah. honestly Scott it was, it was fantastic no, did well, you do that yourself much. yeah the whole thing so tra- tra- travelled up myself Shot all the videos myself and edited it all as well. And then I recorded myself playing ov- over the top. And then and then I wrote the music about the trip. And then I recorded the music that I wrote. That was a, a great trip. So I went up to the Kimberley. And then I, so I did the whole trip on my, my, my bike, a 250cc bike, because um, I wasn't allowed in anything more because the, the the license you get here can't go above 650cc I think anyway um, I had the bike so it's a really small bike to be t- taken up, up there <laughs> no it's insane so I got up to the Kim- Kimberley I would st- stopped throughout on the way and then I rented a Land Cruiser four four wheel drive car and I had some of the, mo- the, mo- the, the, the most fun in my entire life with that car I was driving it like a maniac and, and, and you were just did yourself and through the Kimberley yeah yeah the whole, whole thing sat myself. phones and stuff like she really nowhere oh no I, I didn't have re- reception for the six days that I went up it's, it's called the Gib the Gib River Road and it's meant to be the ultimate Aussie outback adventure right so, so you had no so if anything had gone wrong you'd have been screwed got, pretty much got her, yeah so no sat, sat phone no because no they cost like two, 200 bucks you can, I'm not ha- paying you can, for ha- that. You can hire them <laughs> I was told as well to take an EPIRB as well, which is yeah, a yeah, 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 thing, yeah. but I was just like, I'm not spending any extra cash. Yeah. I'm just You survived it. So how, exactly. did, you, how did you survive so, well, I own? met some South African fri- friends as well, who I'm really good friends with now, who are, who are, who are here in Perth. Um, and we they, were, they had two four-wheel drives as well, so we were like driving up the Gibb River Road, th- three abreast at night, like what a, a laugh so, it some was. Some of your footage of that was really good oh, as well, to see the cars driving together. And, uh, and because we were just come out of the pandemic as well, there was no one there, so we had the whole place to, to ourselves. So we are going, going up to the gor- gorges, right, where they're usually packed. They were completely, completely dead. We were like, this is amazing. So I had some experiences there, which I'll probably will never, ever have again. And then they turned back because the second half of the Gip River Road was closed because it was all close to remote ab- Aboriginal communities, which because of COVID, you weren't allowed near. But I was playing in an Aboriginal school in Kununurra, so I, I had to head, head through there. Um, but during that trip, I completely wrecked the four-wheel drive, right? So I popped two, two of the tyres, uh, bent one of the rims... Uh, cracked the windscreen, broke the radiator, broke the radiator guard, blew a couple fuses, just <laughs> driving it like an uh, and it's like, a, like you stole it. a hundred and ten thousand dollar Land Cruiser, you know, so these yeah. are expensive cars, right? Managed to get it back round to the guy, and then you and must I was, been, he can't have been happy. And then I was just like, sorry, mate, you know, you know <laughs> <laughs> I think you took the insurance cover on it. Yeah, so you no, know, I, I did. Good you job. Know, so that, that was money saved in the EPUB. Right Ex- exactly, so so grand. So I had had all these expenses back back to paying that, and I was skint, right? And I was like, right, can I do some work for you? And then, and he was like, yeah, sure. This guy was like absolutely minted, right? So he has this massive house in D- Derby. He's a to- Toyota mechanic. Him and his wife run this car hire company. They've got like thirty don- dongas as well, which is like a, a shack where folk come to live. So work workies come up there to 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 work on the roads. They st- stay in there, right? Turns out as well, he's got five choppers as well, right? Oh, this guy's right, an yes. absolute legend, right? Yeah. And they both love Scot Scotland, and they, they loved me, and, and me as well. 
in the pipes so they let me stay in their house and they would cook meals for me at night I'd get, get out of the Hang pipes on, this, this is the guy you've wrecked his I know, cruiser I've and actually, he's working in like your long lost son <laughs> I know I know so I'm, so I'm playing pipes around the campfire he's bringing around his mates so all these chopper pilots they all live on on his land he has like all, all, all this land so we're all around the, around the campfires like drinking beers and I'm playing yeah. pipes we're having some uh, some crack I, I ended up doing some gardening for him as well he's like oh do you know how to use a chainsaw mate I'm you've like, got a good Aussie accent <laughs> that is amazing <laughs> and I'm like I sound fucking woo. like I have no idea how to use chainsaw I've, I've never worked with my hands so of course I'm going round this, this, this side of the house with my phone like uh, do's and don'ts of don't sort of cha- chainsaw you see, it's absolutely right so I'm like chopping down fucking trees he- trimming hedges driving his hydraulic truck around to p- pick up all the crap so he has he has this massive land so I'm like trimming hedges all around his workplace all around the dongers all, all all sorts you know ended up paying off like all the money for the, for the car so he turns out he, he, he runs a heli fishing business as well so and it cost about two two thousand dollars to go out. So I I was about to leave and I was like, oh here, um, do you want to come out in the chopper tomorrow? You know, and I'm like, okay, well I'll stay on our day. So so they take you up to places throughout um, the the Derby p- pen- Peninsula. Right? It's places that four 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 wheel drives can't go. So they're 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 flying to where the tide come comes in, right? And they're flying low to scare away the salt wa- water crocs, which are ab- 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 absolutely a joy. Yeah, they're, like, well, they, they're, they're moving away. So you land in places that that you can't get to with cars. You wait for the the um, the tide to come in. You catch white bait with a net, and then you, you use that to catch. But by a month Monday, right? So so we were going out there. We were like crocodile. Though. Deep, it sounds like oh, it's it great, and then we were like a lot of these places. We we're sitting on this cool box, drinking beers, while this, these guys were like we're fishing. And I, I was like, "What is happening here, man?" And then, and then, and then we went back. And so I stayed with them for about six, seven days. But the moral of the sto- story is: the next time you get a hire car, make sure and wreck it. <laughs> yeah, just wreck it. And- I, I think I think Mark and I reckon it would be a different thing for you reckon it, considering you you paid for your supper with playing the pipes. Uh, so uh, he, Mark and I, yeah. you you paid for your supper in far different ways for him. Yeah. No, but these people were the nice folk ever met in their life. Family around business. Or, um, Dave and Maria Preedy from uh, it's called Kimberly Car Car Hair. So if Emily's up. Up, up there, that. But what, what's going on in the background oh, with, the, with the choppers? Choppers, and that? And it, sounds, it's, it sounds like a, an Australian version of like Yellowstone with Kevin Costner. Did they not? Did you not get branded as well? No, 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 no. It was great. But, I mean, these guys took took me in, and so so Dave was the, the guy that ran the thing. He's he's the king of the Kim, Kimberley, right? Because he came up from Perth as a mechanic, just and just built this empire from scratch. And their four kids are now did, down in Perth. Um, I've seen them since, so they came up for came down for Christmas to visit their kids, and we all had, I think it was like the twenty eighth. I think we all had a that, Christmas. That's nice, me. You must have been quite an impression if you only met them for like oh, six or seven were days. Just absolute le- legends, you know. So the the, re- the reason that I went on on that trip as well is because I at the start of twenty twenty I went over to India to travel around Asia um, on a bike. And I was three months into the trip, and then the whole thing got cut short because of COVID. So I had to come home, spent a month in quarantine. So it was like two, two, two weeks in Adelaide, and I on an emergency flight back. And then I was over to Perth, and it was two weeks here as well. And I was like, I couldn't go back. So I, I took six months leave from work. I couldn't go back to work for another two months. I was like, what, oh. what am I going to do now? Oh, so you could just have six months off, off yeah. to be aware. Well, I took six months leave w- without pay and somebody replaced me. And she, so she was on a six-month contract. So I, I couldn't go back. So yeah, you, you're allowed to take leave without pay if it gets approved. So, um, so I had two months left to kill and I was like, what am I going to do, man? So just as the regional borders opened, my friend said, why don't you get a drone, go up there, wear pipes and take some off. Op- Awesome shots! I was like, oh, did "That's you, a great idea." Did you not have a drone? No, so I bought the drone and then I refueled the bike and then I was away. That was it. That was it. Ten, 
the lot. So what, what's the drone have you got? So it's a, a Mavic Mini. So it's the, uh, not yeah, the, the Mavic Mini yeah. 2. It's the one that's not 4K, but still... But yeah, so... Great uh, footage you had on it, Yeah, but even when you do the, the automated flight modes, it, it doesn't even go to the 2.7K and, and anyway. So the, there's four flight modes. There's there's um, there's one that spins round you in a circle. There's one that's called he, Helix, which goes around and up. There's one that goes backwards, and then there's one that goes directly above. So I, I just played around with those four modes, and then the drone did the thing. So I had 160 gigabytes for that trip which was insane and the trip lasted what two months and it took me about three months to to go through it all and god so i'm not really that good at video editing until i I bought so i bought a macbook so in the the social media team at the police we we use uh, adobe premiere pro so i I, I knew a bit about that but i didn't really know much and then use and then there's after effects which is on the adobe suite as well which used to do do the effects like like the text so of course i i came back and i was like right I, i need to create videos with this so I took I, I got the 160 gigs down to 10 minutes and just split split them up in, into two two minute videos as ep, ep, I made the show with Mark before he came in actually Scott we've just, just, we been so busy the last couple of weeks we've just never got into it but oh, they're, yeah, they're really good for oh, you cheers I mean, yeah, honestly it, I mean it, work, it was kind of. professional looking yeah. stuff I, I genuinely thought I wonder if he got that because I, I didn't know you went yourself so yeah, I thought you, you were thing. up there I'm thinking he's up there full camera team all the rest of oh, you did no, it yourself no. you did it yourself well for anyone that's like watched that video now and they've listened to this like two months in the Kimberley oh 160 God. gig of footage Aye. purchased a MacBook figured yeah. out Adobe Illustrator learned how to use a chainsaw Le- yeah learned how to oh, use a chainsaw Vector well, Pajero Sport well, no Vector what were it what were we a Land Cruiser aye. Vector <laughs> Land Cruiser Aye, that was so, uh, so. I had taken six months off to do this trip around Asia, right? And I, I, I came back. I was seriously depressed because you know I was like, oh my god, I've been planning this trip for my. Because I planned when I came over to Oz, I'd planned to go to Brisbane first because my bro- brother there was there. So I planned to travel through Asia anyway and arrive there. The job here came first, so I'd always planned to do this trip. We can't take leave without pay until we have permanent residency. So that came through. Put that location for for farming so there'd been a, like a long build up for this a six month trip and then the whole COVID thing hit and I was like oh my god this trip's ruined but the best two weeks I had in my, out my entire life was, was up there out of the whole two out, out the whole six months so it played out well and then I met some South Africans there as well and we're friends back here in Perth so where were about, where were about in Asia did you go? Uh, so went to India first and I did about 3,000 kilometres through India on a bike I bought there and then I mean the, pl- the plan was to do the whole of Southeast Asia but this just kept getting cut short so I was going to be about two two months in India and then move, move on so I only got, got to see India and what did what did where did you when you were in India where did you stay? Oh, so oh, hostels and stuff, stuff because I like to to meet folk my own age. So I was ma- mainly in hostels, but there's some places where you can't go in hostels, you know, just because there's none around or you arrive l- late at night on the bike. So I did like the, in Delhi. I bought, I bought the bike in Jaipur, went through the whole of Rajasthan, and then down. Oh, down through Ahmedabad, Mumbai, and then I, and I was in Goa, and then that's where the lo- the, the lockdown hit hard. So I, I was in a, a, ho- a hostel there with with friends. It was painted in the the media as an absolutely hor- horrible place where the the police were thrashing you with s- sticks. I've seen the footage that like, was where people absolute did bullshit. Look, yeah. <laughs> so, Is that right? Yeah, oh, it's yeah. complete fiction. Yeah, it was. I mean, there was police standing around with sticks. I th- I think they were just y- using them to. Guide folk, yeah, you know, point whereas, and stick. Yeah, yeah I, had, I had n- yeah. none of that at all. So I, I, I lived in a hostel there for about about six weeks with uh, like half backpackers, half Indians. There, we all threw in our money together, and we all cooked and cleaned the place together because the business, the the hostel owner couldn't get b- business, you know. So we agreed to keep the place going for him, and uh, it, it was like the beach. You know the film The Beach? Oh, yeah, it was yeah, just, yeah. It was just this com- community of folk. There was 15 of us there, and we just, I just had an ama- amazing time. That, that's some, you must have made some serious friendships, haven't you? Doing six oh, weeks of that, that sort of. In that, in close, that place. Yeah, exactly. We, yeah, we, it's, we like an inti- it's like an intimate experience. Yeah, isn't it, when all you're... the bars were closed, so we, we couldn't like leave. We couldn't, well, we, we were on the beach, so we did go down to the beach, but the in- Indians were really scared of COVID, right? So they all like abided by, by, by the rules. So we only went out to shops to, to get food. Um, so the fifteen of us there were were, were a tight 
grip like so. yeah and I, like were what nationalities were, were oh, you, did was, you have like I, I was staying in a room with a Filipino doctor and a, a Lithuanian professional poker player so there was oh, there was that, that. there was a, an American motorcyclist as well so it was us four in the room there was there was about seven or eight in, Indians there so they they were all working at the uh, hostel for food food and board before the the lockdown hit and then they all couldn't get home because the the bo- the borders there all all locked so there was them and then there's there's another couple of um um Europeans and that as well I, I can't mind but it, it cost 5 bucks for a liter of rum Jeez. you can imagine the the car car carnage that ensued <laughs> Such there that's no rum <laughs> yeah 5 though i know it was a re- i mean really cheap so i was able to li- live there food and board um for like and rum for ten bucks a day, like really, really, really cheap. So did you buy? Did you buy a motorbike when you got there then? Yeah, so you're not actually allowed to own a bike there or buy a bike there. But in India, with money, you know, you can you can do whatever you want. So I managed to make friends with a tuk tuk driver, bought the motorbike, put it in his name, you know, and then and then I just left and then drove the bike down, and that was it. And you just went need yourself, Scott. I mean, that I mean. Yeah, I went alone because yeah. I, I was getting quite bored here, like. Doing the same, mund- well, it's not mundane, the same, same old crap, and it's yeah. just life, you know. And I was just like, right, I need something, something to shake, shake this up. I was single as well. I, I just want an, an adventure, and I, I loved the idea of traveling around Asia as well. And then I passed, so I got my, my motorbike license, failed it twice, got it the day before I left. Oh, so you got that? You never had the motorbike before you came to Australia? No, I bought the bike here, right? Yeah. So I passed and test the day before. Before I left for in India. So your first your first driving <laughs> yeah, experience. Yeah, really like, your right. first driving experience on a motorbike were in India. It was India. That's I tell you. It Stephen, doesn't look like the most safest country to be riding oh, a bike. Mumbai was where I learned clutch control. Like it's like find a gap or lose your tail. I'm telling you, it's absolutely mental. Oh, it was good. I, was, I just needed the opposite of boring, though. You know, I just needed. Yeah. I, I suppose because you, you, when you come over, you probably you intended travelling Australia, and that never happened. Yeah, and that then didn't you get then you get a full time job, and as as nice as it is here, when you when you're in full time employment, yeah. it's, people don't get it at home. But it's no different, is it? You're just in yeah. a nicer nicer With surrounding. The sun it's, in your back. it's still nine to five. Yeah. And, and it's the regimented police, and it was yeah. like, I've got to do the same thing day out there. And I thought it's like a great job, you know, you're like, oh, you're a bagpipe player, you, you, you have it easy, you know, it, it gets boring as well, and I just need, needed some yeah. Yeah. It's jobs drama. Job, like, then you always get yeah. a bit fed up. I mean, I, I've, I had one, one friend, used to, I used to teach him at Box Nights when I was a young kid, and he was over, he's a diesel mechanic when we first arrived. And he came he came down to see us, oh, I don't know, six months after we got here, kind of thing. And... He said, like, I'm, I'm going, going home. I said, what, what do you mean? He said, I'm just, you know, bored. He was, he was, he was writing, he used to kick box and my tie and all that kind of thing. He went for boxing when I was, I was teaching when I was about 14. And then he moved through my tie and all the rest of it. And he came over here, Dees and he wanted to see him. He's bigger than me, he had <sighs> hands like shovels. He had the biggest hands I've ever seen. He was a really good boxer as well. And he was a really good mechanic as well. And he came down, but this, this the single life here for him just killed him. You know, and yeah. he, he, was, he was like you, you know, just, just bored and... You come back, you think, I, I, and I'm like, how can you be bored? Because we were here, we've got you know three young kids, we're out yeah. every day doing barbecues, Aye. beach, and stuff. But when you're here on your own, I mean, it's it, different. It must be different. Yeah, yeah, it's different because I, I can't imagine like if I was single when you come here, it's not exactly booming, is it? What well, Perth? Mean, yeah, yeah. Well, well I, I think you find t- that it must be difficult though. Yeah, I, I, I think, think it's just, I think it's just because everything shuts so early. It, it goes. I don't know. It goes quiet too. To because uh, being from UK, you don't go out till late, do you? And like when you're over here, it's like the opposite. It's like everyone goes out early and the night's finished. Just, just, I mean, nightclubs and stuff. They're still there, but you're you're it's right. Not some as of busy the bars as busy like, no. like Glasgow, you know. I mean, I suppose Melbourne would be more busy than it is here, yeah. but. Uh, there's 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 parts I I I like about it as well. I suppose the craziest nights I've I've had here been in Irish bars, so yeah. and then yeah. ex, expats as well. Yeah, but that, then so. yeah, <laughs> yeah. That, that's it. Yeah, I, I like think it. that's what it is. When you go to like your Irish bars or your them them type of places, you you got to have a much different night, aren't you, than yeah. what you would if you just went to a normal yeah. cocktail bar or something. Yeah, yeah. And I mean, yeah. it's still it's still a bold move going away to. I mean, coming here on your own to, to begin with is yeah. tough. Uh, that's a that's big. But at least we all speak the same language. You're driving the same that's side true, of the road. Yeah, yeah. You know, you, you've probably got to bump chances are you bump into some expats. You came to a job where a Scottish pipe band likelihood you're going to meet other Scots. Yeah. And then you go to India on your own. When I arrived, I was like, oh my god, what what am I going to do now? Where 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 will I go? You know, I'd, I I arrived with six months, and I'm like, oh, shit. 
Had you not planned any? No, no I hadn't planned any of it. So you just, you just booked your flight and thought, right, that I'll was decide it. when the, I get the, there. The, 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 the flight was 290 bucks as well, and I was just like, I, I had. How, how did you get a flight tender for 290 dollars? It's mental, isn't from, it? From, where did you from fly Paris. Yeah. Yeah. And the flight, the flight back. Was, that. The flight back was two, two and a half grand because of the. Oh, yeah, the yeah. yeah. Covid thing, you know, but yeah, it was cheap. How did you How did you find the culture in India? Have you been Have you been anywhere like that before? Like any sort, like cause no, not really. Like poor, as, really poor countries, not as poor as that. But um, I think that because they have less, they're just so much they, more fun. They appreciate to be around. everything. Oh, yeah. The community spirit there is is it's been it's probably they they have they have it right in life. You know, they have much more community spirit. They're all so close, whereas it's maybe lost a bit in Western yeah. culture, you know? I, I, I remember when I was a kid, I, I, I've said this to a lot of my friends as I've been growing up, but I, I didn't realise we had nothing when we were kids. We were so happy. We mm. never, I never had to... I, I, know, I don't think my mum and dad had any money to talk about, really. I only probably realised when I started working that, you know, my mum and dad couldn't have made any money at all, really. And but we had a great life, though. You know, and then now, now yeah. kids are like, they're so used to having everything so quick and... I mean, yes, it's, it's a, a material. Uh, West, the Western world now is just a materialistic but world. But we used to be happy, iPads and be happy all that. with nothing. You know, we were happy, and you never knew. Well, I know. Yeah, I mean, we had nothing. I mean, my mum. Well, my mum and dad split up, but when my mum were young, she used to make our clothes. And I remember my dad would like we'd go on holiday to Butlins and that. And I remember once he were, <laughs> he were out in back at street with a tin of paint, painting painting cow with a brush. Exactly. Because yeah. they had no nothing. Nothing and you, pr- you probably had more fun doing that than playing an app on an iPad. Yeah, yeah, yeah you know what I mean. Yeah, yeah. I know. But that, that, this what we, I think we were talking about it off before we started recording. Actually, but you know the idea, the you know sort of community, everybody living in the one house and stuff like that. It's I, I think it's a great idea. You know, I, I would love it. I don't think my kids would do it. To be honest, but I'm, you never. It's, know. It's As not, you get older, I might ask them. The thing is, it's normal, isn't it? But, for like these, for the for like your your Asian countries oh, and it's having houses. looking after your parents is like. Yeah. Is what you do. So I, I was driving through like a small r- rural town. I, I'd, I'd, so I had the g- g- Google Maps going on on my phone, right, and it, it was t- taking me on the, the fastest route from, like I, I don't know, this five hundred cl- kilometer route, but it wasn't the route that you're sp- supposed to go, right? So it was through all all these villages, right, and I was yeah. like, right, fuck it, I'll, I'll, I'll just go, go you know. And the bike en- ended up bra- breaking down as the sun was. Going down about about a kilometre outside this town, and then these there was like four kids on one bike went went past. Like I was obviously the first white man they'd seen in a long time, and they were like, "Jesus, man!" And then they 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 couldn't speak a word of Eng, Eng, English as well, and and they were like hand gesturing me to jump on the back of their bike. So there was like five of us on on their sco- scooter, right? They took me into the town. Some the, the, some mechanic there came out, picked up my bike, came came, came back, r- repaired the bike. Tur- turned out it was on, only the spark plugs, and then and then they they said, "Look, it's too late for you to go out now. Why, why don't you stay with us?" So I stayed in this family's house. Right? There was there must have been about twenty five of them in in like a two bed house, right? And uh, they they made me a chicken curry. This, the the dad was like walking me around the town, holding holding my my hand. I'm, I'm like, this is getting weird. And he's taking me around to like a wedding that's gone on, and like he, he was taking me around all all his friends, and we're like, look, look at this boy, this man look at here. The Scotsman. Yeah, Did yeah, you have yeah. Your pipes under your arm. Yeah, yeah. Played played <laughs> with a tune the pipes, and they were just so amazing. They were like so like genuinely help helpful too. And then and then they took me to this Indian wedding as well. And like the photographer was taking more pictures of me with the guests than the bride and the groom. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, like it's, it's, yeah, so it's as if you're some celebrity. kind of celebrity. I know. Yeah. I, know, I, know, I know, thought you, you and McGregor. I know, I do you know, know what? I was thinking that you would. They probably thought, "Oh God, it's the long way down." Yeah. It's Ewan. <laughs> it's Ewan. <laughs> that's, that's what it is on, on, on the bike did, side. Did, I bet that's what it felt like, though. Did you feel like you were doing was, the long way down and some travelling? It was amazing, eh? And it just ah, oh, that's nice. Yeah. I mean, that that's fantastic. Yeah, I mean, there was so though, I mean, it? I did, like that. That community vibe was just amazing. And then the, yeah. the, the, the next day they fed me as well. And then. I went on my, um, my my way, you know, and they're like, "Oh, bye, bye." And did they, you know. and they did all that just for just, just for helping just you to out. help me out? Yeah, that's fantastic. And you don't hear you don't hear enough of that. Can you? Yeah, I think that's the thing. And it third world countries, they might be the poorest. Well, they're obviously the poorest countries in the world, but the, nice the, the family and the the values that they have, yeah. everyone could take from them. 
it, it's yeah. the same with the world over. I think. I mean, when well, you've I got nothing, you've got nothing. You, you'd happy to give. You give more. Yeah, yeah definitely. You give ev- everything when you went. I mean, to a nothing. complete stranger, just some guy yeah. who brought down on a bike, yeah. Yeah. and he's holding your hand and taking oh, you take around. around the town. Yeah. And I'm like, what's going on but here? That, 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 that happened here. I, I know for a fact that happened here. There was a guy from I think he was from the Netherlands, and he was he was trying to go from. Room or something down to you know Albany or something on an electric car or something like that. I think it was an electric car, and whatever happened, he made it to Alcamos there, and uh, her friends uh, Zoe and her husband Lee, they they put him up for a night and let him charge his car up and things and stuff like. And, you know, just just and apparently had had loads of sort of help in the way down. So it's, you know, the, were you like doing something on social media to let people know what you were doing? Yeah, yeah, story, that's but, that, but yeah. That's yeah. Because that's that people will help out for that because then they're getting they get oh, knowledge, don't they? Yeah, oh, well, like, that 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 may well be the case. But I can assure you that's that's no way Zoe uh, helped him out. Like she just helped him out because yeah. there was a guy struggling, and I, th- I think that's what people do. You see somebody struggle, you want to help them out, don't you? Yeah, yeah that's human nature, really. Yeah, that's, that's true. But I think here there'll be more app, apprehension too. They'll be like, "Oh, he's this weird, weird guy." Yeah. yeah. As well, I mean, it's a, a country that's smaller than Australia, right? And they've got one point four billion folk there, so there's there's no weird man st- standing around. It's like ants. Yeah, <laughs> there's there's everywhere. folk ev- everywhere. And, it's and yeah, and I, it it comes to life more at night as well, doesn't oh, it? Oh yeah, yeah. It's you think of it as a poor country, which it is. It's got like really. But real, it's not. It's got it real. It's got a lot of poverty, but it's yeah. it's going to be one of the superpowers because they, there's so much infrastructure going into India and, and even even Pakistan. Well. It's going to it's going to be replacing um, China at some point. I believe Apple. I believe Apple have just pulled out of China and now they've gone straight into India. I would suggest any, anybody to go there, especially alone as well, because I was concerned about oh, who, where, where will I go and, and what what will I do now? But I'm, I was meeting new folk every day, and then you you meet some random like Dutch guy, and he's he's going up to see this, and he's like, oh, do you want to come, mate? And I'm like, ah, sure. Then uh, and then that's the next four four days sorted, you know. Yeah. I suppose that's that's, 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 well, that's the one of perks of going on your own yeah, as well, yeah. isn't it? Because yeah. like if you were your partner, or you might feel a bit. Yeah, you've got to ask them, and then they don't. Oh, we don't want to go with that weirdo. Well, it's I know. somebody else to look after as well. And I think that's if you take somebody with you, then you're, you're responsible for things. Yeah, you have to make sure they're safe. And stuff. But you go yourself. You're like, who cares? Did you, did you have any like preconceptions before you went that like you might not be like feel safe or? You I might... wanted to feel unsafe. I, I I wanted to shake things up so it was the opposite of my life here. I, I wanted to be reckless, unsafe, yeah. and just yeah, just ma- do what you time. wanted to and see yeah. what happens. Yeah. Just to take to, to get the heart pump, pumping a bit, I think. Yeah, it's, it's good to do something to get the heart pumping into. Oh, it doesn't matter what it is. You have to do. Yeah, it. You, you, you need do, to have yeah. either like a project in life, you know, or you, you need to have something to just that's going on. You know, you've got to take risks. I mean, yeah. we're, we're, I think we're all in the same boat. We've all we've all taken. Some I mean, coming here is a risk, isn't it? Yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah. And I think come come here on your own, it's got a risk. But coming here, coming here with family, it's maybe got a different kind of risk for that. I mean, the risk for me coming here with my family is like you know. What the kids don't like, what the wife's not happy, you know. Yeah. They, then it's like, what well, I love it, she doesn't, she loves it, I don't. You know, they're all risk, but you're coming on your own, it's like, well. Yeah, so me and my friend Chris, we, we arrived on, on the same flight. Um, so I knew him from a different pipe band. And so I knew of him, but we weren't friends, so we didn't really know know each other all that well. And then we met. So you never came over together, though. You just you well, just, we, just happened to be in the same. Oh, so he was coming the over for the same job. So we both got the job that that were up at the same time, and then we were both ch- chatting to each other on f- Facebook, right? And I was like, "All right, mate, con- con- congratulations, blah blah blah." And it was like, "Right, I'll book the flights f- f- for us both because we're mutual friends." And then I was like, "Right, do you want to do two two day- days in Bangkok?" Eh? And I was like, "I <laughs> sound okay." So Dan, so we came friends. <laughs> There, you so know? you went to Bangkok on the way to Perth. Yeah, 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 and then we arrived here, here in Perth, and, in, and into job, and then we we were both in, in interested in fitness too, you know. So we 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 joined a CrossFit gym here because he'd been doing that a lot at home. I was complete completely new to all, and uh, we were like, was like t- n- another twenty. Th- Dirty folk there, so we made friends throughout the gym. But I think that unless you go out and actively meet meet, meet folk, it's it's going to be hard. Yeah, yeah. we've we'll talked about that before. Talk, Matt, Matt mentions that regularly. You've got, you've got to really put yourself out there. Don't you, you have to. You know, yeah, you only get out of what you put into it. That, that's yeah. yeah you've got, and even because like, I know a lot of people are like shy and quiet, but you've just got to put yourself out of your comfort zone. Yeah. You join a group and then you, you you go and meet like ten, twelve folk, and then they become friends, and you've got a whole yeah. different thing going on in your life. Yeah, and yeah. I, I think that's the the important thing to do here. You know, it's making like, yeah. making connections. Isn't yeah, it? I think hundred yeah, percent. Yeah. yeah, my mum used to say, "You've got a good Scottish tongue in your head." 
go and use it. it yeah, right. Yeah. So, so that's why the sad thing. Yeah, yeah, the sad like thing that. is though. Sad thing is most people don't speak to anybody, do they? Yeah. They, 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 they walk past someone, they put their head down, or they look the other way, or they pick the mobile phone up. Anything bar eye contact. And it's so sad, and I think it's going to get worse and worse, isn't it? Because kids, yeah. kids, kids. I mean, Christ, it's bad enough with our age. People are so again talking to people, yeah, but children now, it's like yeah. they don't go outside. They don't even know how to talk to people. Yeah, yeah. Like, people but, just talk, communicate through social media. Hmm. Yeah, I mean, you're right, I think you're right to right to a certain degree, I suppose. But I mean, what Scott's saying, the kids don't go outside. That that's probably one hundred percent true as well. My my kids, I've got three Xboxes in the house, bizarrely, right. I've got, I've got a PlayStation. One's, one's not enough. I've got a play. Well, they had one that they shared, and then then they got another one because they had Christmas money and they bought it herself. And then my daughter, she bought one herself. I think she maybe got it for her birthday. I don't know. Anyway, it doesn't matter. It's ridiculous that there are so many, right? I, I put my hands up. I apologise. There are so many. But the good thing that is they're playing with their friends who don't stay in the same estate or some of them don't even stay in the same country. I, yeah. I, play, I play Xbox with my niece and my nephew in Scotland. And... But, and it's, it's fantastic. So I'm, I'm, some, I've been up to like three in the morning playing, the, and their dad's going, oh, do, do you know why I go to bed? Like, what, what do you mean? I'm playing my niece and nephew. It's only sleep. I'll catch up with tomorrow. You know, but it, it, you've got, there is advantage to that. Yeah. There is, absolutely. But then they, they almost spend abnormally long on it at the end. There's, there's yeah. zero it's the t- outdoor yeah, stuff. It's yeah. It's yeah, the no, time. you're right. You're right. You, you've got to get the balance. But that, that's where your parent has to come in and say, listen, yeah. time to go to the beach or time to go to the bike. Or, you know, so you've got to do something. And these tech companies, they, they want to just have more folks. Yeah. So yeah. it's already going to get worse because they create better pro- products yeah. so that there's more folks. And the problem, the problem is as well, there's a lot of parents out there that they just look at technology as thinking this is babysitting I don't yeah, need to do exactly. anything I don't need yeah, to do anything with yeah. my kids just give them ah, technology yeah. and I can just leave them all there yeah I, I've been to weddings where, where like I, I go to the back of the church because I'm, I have to wait until they get married but before I play them out right, and then there's the kids that are acting up and then the mum will pull this iPad out and go like it's weird isn't it when you go out and you see people and especially like if you see couples yeah. or you see a, you see a group of friends and you see, you see it more with like if you, if you see like um, groups of women, especially. Oh my god, they just they're all together, but they're all on the phones. I mean, with guys, it don't seem to happen as much. Like if I go out with my mates, I've never pulled my phone out because you just engage, don't you're, you? You're 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 right as well. I can see it getting worse. It's just like knowing when to use it and when not. No, it's, it's definitely going to be a problem. People would not be able to communicate. I mean, that's what I was keen to get Scott in the studio and stuff to have a chat as well, because it's just a wee bit more difficult when you try to engage on online. You know, it's, yeah, ch- the, the chat. Yeah, yeah. It's, look at. I mean, we, we discussed this a lot. I mean, I think the more you do it, the easier it is. But if you if it's somebody you've just met, it, it's quite difficult to get a conversation going. I mean, I had the same problems speaking to like my family back home. They, they just ask you, so how's the weather? How's the job? Rubbish like that. But the more you engage with people on it, yeah. the easier it is. But but it's, it's yeah, it's, it's, it's not the same as getting somebody here. I find you both quite easy, easy to speak to though, because there's 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 definitely folk that I, I would go and speak to who who are, who are not as cu- comfortable as as you both. And then I'd find my myself having like really ma- major sp- speech blocks. You've made it very chilled out vibes here that's, so that, that's, that's well I think that's what we that's how we started it just have a chat yeah. that's yeah. pretty much it because like, we've never we've never we've never scripted have we no. I was I've I've been in speaking situations though you know before where like, I mean I mean I, I mean I've obviously got a stutter you know and there's t- times where it can flare up quite quite bad you know but I came came in here and I was very relaxed does it so. does your stutter kind of come more when you're nervous uh, I don't think think so because there's times where I'm in like speaking situations where I'll be sp- Speaking to like large groups of folk, and then and then I'm completely fluent. There's times when I'm sp- speaking to my mum, where I'm like on a one to one like like this, is, and it's completely fluent as well. And then there's times when I'm in exactly the same situation, and then it's and it's not. I have, I have quite big big blocks, so I've I've not really found any re- reason or rhyme to it. The only time where I know it's uh, guaranteed to be worse is when I'm hung hung hung. Over, over right. So <laughs> yeah. when I've had a, a, lo- a lot of beers the night before, then then it's worse. But apart from that, I've not really found yeah. any re- re- reason or right rhyme to it. And because it's so buried into the subconscious, there it's quite a difficult thing. To I've, imagine, I've got you know. a very good friend in Scotland. Actually, I've known him since I was a kid. He, maybe sorry, Tourette's type of thing. Tourette's, but, I think, is very similar to yeah. stuff like stuff. Well, that's what well, But honestly, that you'd never, I mean, you'll never reaction. meet a nicer yeah. man in your whole entire life. I can guarantee that he's a he's an absolute gentleman, hundred percent. And he's the best public speaker I have ever came across. Yeah. But see when he's up doing public speaking, man, he was he's he's the best I've ever came across. And I've, I've listened to a lot of guys and Did he not did he not have an episode when he was public nev- speaking? Not, never wanted to stand up and he'd just be bang. I don't know how you do it. Yeah, well, it's strange. Yeah. It's strange. Yeah. Well there's the stories in the people that have got similar things or like stutters and that and then they sing 
Yeah, when you sing, it, it doesn't come just, through at all. Yeah. Perfect, it doesn't happen. Yeah. So, so what's your, what's the the mum and your, your mum and dad and your your sisters in Scotland? What do they think you've been here and stuff? They are they happy for you being here? Is it has it been quite an easy transition? Three years, their siblings are your yeah. Your, I mean, two they just knew sister that here as well. I suppose happen. when my brother came here first, the first one to leave the roost, you know, and I, I just always I had it in the back of my mind that he was here. So I just w- was aware it'd been a good, I don't know, seven eight years of just knowing that he's been there. And every time he came back over, he was he was always more tanned and he had yeah. more money. You know, yeah, he had a, yeah, <laughs> yeah. You tend to, yeah, your lifestyle kind of is yeah. much better here than it is at all. And as my well. mum was also in Australia for I think the first seven year, year, years of her life as as well. So, oh, yeah. she, so, so she was from well, not from Adelaide, but she was in Adelaide. Oh, for, so has your mum got like is she an Australian no, citizen? No, she, she isn't. So my grandparents they they never went for citizenship, right? Obviously, she she wasn't best pleased, but. But about that because she has plans to come here now, you know. Yeah. Um. So ev- everyone's and in my step mum as well. Who I mean, we're we're very close, even though they've, they've all sp- uh, sp- uh, split up, you know. Um. She's she's got loads of family here as well. So there's there, there's loads of family there on that side as well. And I suppose when the job came up, my my dad's friends friends are here as well. Yeah. I just suppose there was always this Perth always seemed like a base camp. Yeah. yeah. So it was just it was just slowly all come over by bit. Yeah. So I, I think yeah. particularly I me mean, maybe harder certainly coming as a single man and stuff, but for a family environment I think it's, it could be yes. any better. I, I certainly couldn't, couldn't be happier with coming to Perth. I like sure it. How, yeah. I mean, I, yeah. I don't know. I, I think it's probably easy coming on your own. I think coming coming with the family is probably more difficult than coming St- on your own. Stressful, yeah. I mean, yeah. I'll say it was probably the easiest decision I've made. It was just like took. T- it's took just your decision, job. isn't it? It's not no one else's decision. Yeah. Your decision. Packed my my clothes, man. I was like, that's all I need. I can get is anything that, else it, here. What do you can? Eat? I mean, I say this again a couple of times. You know, and I, we never ran away from Scotland with a good life and stuff. Did you? Yeah. Do you, do you can feel you. You not run away, but did you? Were you trying to escape it, or were you just looking for something different? Or oh, uh, I was looking for something different. I suppose when I came, I came here in two thousand four, fourteen. I'd already seen the place, and I thought it was unreal. You know, I I used to work with young offenders back in um, Edinburgh, and Glasgow, right? So we used to work with them when they were in jail. Yeah. You know, um, Paul Paul Young. Yeah, fe- yeah. I, my, one of my there. best mates used to be. He was. I think it was his first job as a prison officer. Was in yeah, young offenders. Yeah. The stories he. I need to tell his quick story. Yeah, I went on. You go. Don't yeah. be divert off, right? But, <laughs> so my mate John, he's working Paul uh, Young offenders, and I, I don't think he was driving the van, right? But what they did, they took him to. <laughs> Uh, what's it called Blair Drum you know Blair Drum and Safari Park yeah, I know so that, yeah. they, they take some, the kids to Blair Drum and Safari the, Park the right? tree, tree top walks and all that yeah all, all that kind of yeah. stuff so he gets in and he gets to the gate and they go into the ranger station the ranger sets them all, okay, all these you know, young offenders down and says right okay look this is what happens you have to do this this and this when you, you don't open the van and the doors unless you're told etc etc et yeah okay so they're out there they're driving through the lion enclosure right the lion enclosure lion enclosure Kids open the van, jump out, start kicking the ball around in the ground. <laughs> <laughs> and the, the prison guard, that he's sitting in front, going, what the fuck? And he's shouting them, get back in. Next thing, the ranger comes over, over his big range roar king, and he's up at the sunroof shouting to him, Yo, get back in the van, the fucking lions, he's get back in the van. And he says, the, one of the young kids goes, we're not touching your fucking lines. <laughs> we're, we're, not. Just, we're, we're not touching <laughs> your lines. <laughs> they didn't, they didn't see the threat at all. <laughs> Classic. Yeah, expected to be speaking for like half yeah. an hour tops. But it's been good fun, the score. Yeah, you know, it's great. Yeah, people who say yes to things, they're easy to go. Uh, right? I'm always you a know. yes man. I think everyone that comes on this program is a yes man. Yeah, I'll have to I, be, th- yeah. I think to, I think to be, I think to be an expat, you've got to be more prepared to say yes and yeah. To say no. Do you yeah. agree? Like people that say yeah all the time, doors always open. Yeah, I think so. And yeah, things yeah. work out. You make you make you you meet way more friends, and I think you see the positive side of car- karma as well. Like when you're, uh, you're yeah, really definitely. Great. I think if you make an effort, like a coming coming here, it's as if karma rewards you. Well, that's and that's true. true. Yeah, for that's making true. the effort, yeah, and I think yeah. it's true in it. Yeah, it's look. You, you say yes, things happen. Right? You say no, nothing's going to happen. Simple as that. Too yeah. many people say no, and they wonder why nothing yeah, ever happens, right. and they wonder that's why they're stuck in a rut. Yeah, absolutely never agree with that. that. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah no, there's, there's no question about that. So I mean, I know some point. people probably pessimistic as well, aren't they? Like my my two brothers, did love to be here, but I think getting here it's probably just too much for them yeah. to contemplate. And I think if they'd have too, if they if they thought bugger it, I'm going to take the plunge, they could have been here. 
There'd be so much d- different things that are happening to them. Yeah. yeah, and I wish they would because I'd love to, I'd love to have them here. Like you're so fortunate to have you. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah I feel fortunate. As, as yeah, there's nothing yeah. like yeah. having family around. Yeah, so even if you, even if you ever felt like you were getting homesick, which you probably never would because you've got brother and sister here. Yeah, yeah. And you've got that much family here. I think it'd make a big yeah. If if if, if like my, like my wife, she's really homesick as I've said before, and I think if she could have family here, it, it'd change so much. Yeah. And I suppose one of the great things then about technology is you know that you have fa- FaceTime and things like yeah. like this. Uh, I think all is sort of in the same kind of boat. We we yeah, embrace. You have you got to embrace it as well. Though, oh, you know, so like, like yeah. people just go, oh, it's too hard. No, nah. you, know, so, no, you, you just have to adapt. Go, yeah, adapt, improvise, and overcome. Like I said Bear Grylls. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, you, you're closer to Bear Grylls than any other, anyway. Yeah. Well, I didn't drink my own piss, <laughs> FYI. <laughs> but you're right. You go outside your comfort zone, then yeah. gr- great things happen. I think that's a really good spot to stop and go outside your yeah. comfort zone. Great things happen. That yeah. is a that's a statement to finish on. I think. Yeah. yeah. Excellent. Thanks very much for coming, mate. It's been yeah. an absolute yeah. pleasure. Pleasure for me as well. It's been really good speaking to you. Fascinating listening to your story and getting <laughs> here. And, no, thanks very much. Yeah, and again, it. you're not just a bagpiper. There's more to. There's more. There's more behind you. There's you're the risk taker. <laughs> risk taker, bagpiper. Thank Appreciate you. It. Thanks Thank for coming, you. mate. Thanks. Thanks for listening. And if you enjoyed the show as much as we did, follow us on Instagram and Facebook at Expats and Core Cats, and hit that subscribe button.